Hi guys, welcome to our cardiovascular step-by-step guide. Um, today we'll be talking you through how to do a slick cardiovascular examination. If you need the written material to guide you along the way, check out the link at the bottom of your screen. Let's get started. As with any examination, start with a confident introduction. Tell them who you are, what you will be doing. Um, check their details and ensure that they're happy for you to proceed. Once you've checked that the patient is in the correct position, move to the end of the bed and just have a general look at the patient. Are they short of breath? Do they look edematous? Are there any adjuncts that give clues about their condition? So IV infusions, GTN sprays, things like these. Move on to the hands and just have a little feel of the temperature of the hands. Are they cold? This could be an indicator of poor cardiac output or hypovolemia. Um, what is the patient's cap refill? If it's less than two seconds, that's normally okay. But if it's prolonged, ask yourself why that might be. Look more closely at the nails. Is there a sign of clubbing which could indicate cyanotic heart disease or possible chronic endocarditis? Uh, again, look for things like splinter hemorrhaging, uh, a sign of a possible subacute bacterial endocarditis. After this, move on to check the patient's pulse. You're feeling for character and regularity. Spend about 15 seconds doing this and multiply by four. Also spend 15 seconds having a little look at their respiratory rate. Move on from here to check both radial pulses at the same time, looking for any possible delay. Um, this could indicate things like a coarctation of the aorta or a possible dissection. After you've done this, um, move on to a procedure that checks for a collapsing pulse. Ask the patient before you do it if they've got any shoulder joint problems. Uh, explain to them that you'll be lifting their arm up quite quickly um, and if they have any pain to let you know. Um, this checks for a collapsing pulse which can sometimes be a sign of an aortic regurgitation. Moving up, have a look at the patient's eyes. Here look, you're looking for things like xanthalasma, uh, which could be a sign of hypercholesterolemia, or corneal arctus, which again could be another sign of hypercholesterolemia. Don't forget to check for um, any pale conjunctiva that the patient might have. This could indicate an anemia. After this, move down to the mouth and check the tongue. You're looking for signs of cyanosis, uh, glossitis um, and angular colitis, both of which could indicate iron deficiency anemia. Now, working your way back down, check the JVP at the neck. Ensure the patient is in the correct position uh, and a raised JVP can sometimes indicate fluid overload or that the patient's heart is failing. You can also check for hepatojugular reflux and this essentially involves applying firm pressure to the liver and then checking for a sustained rise of the JVP. Uh, a positive result indicates that the patient might have heart, um, right-sided heart failure uh, or a possible uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Once you get to the chest, the first thing to do is to have a general inspection of the chest, looking for any scars or pacemaker boxes. Next step is to palpate the chest, and the main things you're feeling for here are heaves, which are basically hypertrophy of the heart, or thrills, which are palpable murmurs. Don't forget to feel for the apex beat as well. It's uh, normally found in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. However, it can be displaced with certain heart conditions. Move on to have a listen to the heart. Um, start off in the mitral region um, and you're listening for murmurs that are loudest in this region. Now, if you want to make any of these murmurs enhanced, a manoeuvre you could do is ask the patient to move to their left side and if the murmur is louder on expiration, it's likely to be a left-sided heart murmur. The tricuspid region is next, so move across to the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal edge and have a little listen. These murmurs can be enhanced by inspiration uh, so ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold their breath while you listen. Move across to the second intercostal space on the left sternal edge for the 
pulmonary region uh, and the maneuver on this occasion which enhances it is inspiration as well and finally the aortic region which is um, level on the second intercostal space but on the right sternal edge and the maneuver on this occasion will be expiration which enhances the murmur think structurally where the murmur is so if it's a right-sided murmur right has an i in it so it's going to be inspiration and if it's a left-sided murmur left has an e in it and it's expiration nice and simple also don't forget to have a feel of the carotid whilst you're listening to the heart this gives you an idea if the murmur you're hearing is a systolic murmur or a diastolic murmur listen to your neck as well Okay, so we're reaching the home straight now. Onto the back, you're looking for any evidence of sacral edema, which could uh, be as a result of heart failure or fluid overload. Have a listen to the lungs and particularly the lung basis for any crackles, which again could indicate both of those things. Next, conduct a brief vascular examination. So start off with the abdomen. Um, have a listen for any aortic bruies or renal bruies and have a little feel for uh, any evidence of uh, uh, aortic annual. Move down to check the pulses in the popliteal region, uh, check the posterior tibialis pulse and the dorsalis pedis. Might be a good idea also to turn to the examiner and say, normally you would check the femoral pulse. Um, would they like you to do that today? Uh, often in examinations, the, they will turn around and say, no, that's fine, um, continue with your examination. Thank the patient for their time and ask them if they have any questions. Turn to the examiner and explain to them any other procedures or examinations you would like to do. At this point, it's probably useful to summarize your examination findings and to go on and explain some further investigations you would do. The best way to do this is to break up the investigations into bedside tests, blood tests and uh, radiology. Okay guys and girls that's pretty much it. If you need the written guides to go along with it click on the uh, link on oskipass.com in front of you. Likewise if you just want to see the run through of this video without me talking through it um, you've got the video on the right side of your screen to click through. And if you found this useful, please share with friends and leave a comment below. Let us know what else we can improve. So we'll see you on our next video.